show you just quickly all of the resources are on the wiki for this presentation um, but there are different acronyms one second There are different acronyms to use um, for students. So we have the POW, which is pick your topic, organize your notes, and then writing or drafting. And then the tree piece is the topic sentence, tell what you believe. The R, three reasons or more, why do I believe it? Will my readers believe this? And then actually numbering your reasons. And the E, the ending, wrap it up, and then examining. Do I have all my parts? of my persuasive letter. So definitely a good tool to be using with struggling writers. Um, and these templates are all available online. Has anybody used these templates yet? Any of them? Okay, so something again, just to rem like refresh your memory with, because I know you've had so much this year, um, just remind you that this would be a good place to bring it in, yeah. Okay. And that works really well, just having the pieces from first grade with yeah. topic and then three reasons. Yeah. Adding evidence, but I mean, they're making a lot of them their own web. And so they're really familiar with it. I like, I think I know the web you're talking about with like a bigger circle at the top and then the three like reasons branching off. And I think that's very appropriate for first grade too, especially beginning writers. Um, so that's great. But I do find, um, I think with persuasive writing, structure is such a huge piece to it and having a well-structured piece. So bringing in and utilizing the graphic organizers um, can really be helpful. Yeah. I have a particular writer who struggles with the graphic organizer such a, so much of a bigger burden. It's, it, the student views it as even more work. And it's trying to, do you have any suggestions to try to get the student, like, to say how much better the writing can be and how easier your final piece will be to use it? Real resistant to the. Are other kids using graphic organizers? Some. Okay. I mean, to me, it's just part of the writing process, yeah. you know, and it's one of those things you have to do. Um, is has there been like a particular graphic organizer that's been troubling troubling or just generally just in general they, they just see even beyond that one student they see the whole planning piece as extra work they just want to write and be done so one thing i have a question on their graphic organizers are they writing phrases are they writing words or complete sentences um depends on the class some it's complete some it's Okay, because I would think, I think of a graphic organizer and how I utilize them. I'm not writing complete sentences, yeah. you know, and if they are able to just write like a quick word here, you know, what's my main idea, um, you know, and then even a few, a few words or phrases for the details and explain to them that this is just a place to capture your big thoughts, your big ideas. You don't have to put in all the details there. Um, I would emphasize that. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Another for fourth grade, I used um, just to get the ball rolling with yeah. a struggling writer, like a, a top down web. Mm -hmm. to our topic, which um, his was having longer recess. Okay. Like reason one, reason two, reason nice. three. Nice. And reason one was like, exer we just wrote exercise. Yes. Um, playing games, and like, I forget what the last reason was, but it was very, like, like you said, one word. Yeah. Like, so he wrote like, weight, healthy. Just like little words, so it didn't feel like a lot of work. And then now all of a sudden he's like all about it, all about you. Good. Because it, it really sparks his memory. Like he needs those words to yeah. like even begin to form a sentence. And I think it should be, good. I'm so glad to hear that. It should be a useful, easy tool for kids. It shouldn't be cumbersome. Um, and uh, Cindy, it's funny thinking about it, like teaching first and second grade, I feel like a lot of kids get into that mentality. Like they have, they have to be taught how to use a graphic organizer. And that graphic organizers do not contain full sentences, but it's so ingrained in their heads sometimes mm -hmm. that they have to do that. And maybe kind of retraining these kiddos to think, you know, in that way, like this is just a quick memory sparker to organize, you know, your big ideas. Yeah. I also think the benefit of using a web is that there's 
so familiar with uh -huh. the way, much more familiar with the way that they can make that for themselves, which mm -hmm. I mean, that's not that's true. That's true. That's a third grade learning standard. But they're, you know, that's easy for them. It's making the web and right. the input the ideas. But it's not, oh, what is the scrapbook going to start? Can I come up with the ideas? Right, right. Mm -hmm. So thinking about what's best for them. But if you are using top down webs, then maybe that is a good place to start with them. I even wonder if you could use like the top down web and kind of code it some way, like the T in the big, like the big part at the top, like T, tell what you believe, and they have to put one word there. And then like underneath, like our reason in each of the boxes, and they'd have to pop in their reasons. Yeah, and then it'd be a different shape. So the yeah. would be one shape, the R would be yeah. shape. Yeah. So taking, you know, this same idea mm -hmm. and just putting it into a friendly format, um, something to think about. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It yeah. definitely helps too in the whole, in like the whole class use as well. Like mm, our yeah. entire fourth grade class used mm -hmm. this. So it was nice for him, for my guy to do like something like this and then do this. Mm -hmm. so it was like putting words and then this right. same phrases. And he didn't feel like he stuck out or anything because he was essentially using the same thing, just a little something. Yeah. Inside, you know? Yeah. You might have to scaffold a little bit to get to that point, but um, I think you will be able to get there. Questions or thoughts? No? Okay. So what I want you to do is take a few minutes. You're starting your unit tomorrow. You haven't started yet. It sounds like you're in the middle of it. Choose one of your topics and start drafting a sample you would share with your kids. And um, I'll show you mine. So I chose the movie thing. Um, and I kept it kind of bland, knowing that I would be using this piece throughout the unit and I'd be going back in and teaching the kids how to add a catchy lead, how to add a strong ending. I'd go back in and show them how a personal experience can make a persuasive piece even stronger. Um, so I kept it more just like, you know, opinion, reasons ending right now. So I said, I believe that moviegoers should be able to bring food and beverages from home into the theater. The drinks and snacks that are sold at the movie theater are not healthy. They are filled with salt and sugar. Many people do not want to eat this unhealthy food. The items that are sold um, are also very overpriced, which can be financially challenging for large families. Additionally, some people are required to eat certain foods at precise times due to medical conditions like diabetes or hypoglycemia. Movie theater employees should not interfere with these requirements. I hope that this unfair policy is reconsidered in the near future. Um, so I probably would tone it down a bit if I was in first or second or third grade. Um, but again, just keeping it kind of like a skeleton structure, knowing that that would kind of be my anchor piece to go back to and model with the kids. Yeah. What do you have to add on in two? There is a piece about adding in a personal experience. A small moment. A small moment. Again, like linking in that narrative piece. So that might be something I'd add in. Just revising in general. I might change things up a bit. Is there anything else? I'm trying to think. Yeah. No, I just have a quick yeah. question. Um, so if I'm looking at this graphic organizer here, and I would say that your opinion statement, your first sentence would go in the my opinion yeah. box, and you have your three reasons, of course, saving the best for last. Mm -hmm. um, so would you show them that you're missing an introduction sentence? You could do that. You could. I'm um, thinking about it. So, you know, dear I employees of yeah. theaters, or yes. whatever the case may be. And that would be, that's my error. I should have added that in first. Um, I should have, you know, gone in and thoroughly done that intro sentence. But I could go back and, and you know, yeah, you absolutely. Okay. So. I didn't mean to point Oh, God, no, not at, oh, okay. not at all. Not at all. But, um, I just make sure no, absolutely. So take a few minutes and choose a topic and start drafting. Again, Looking at those unfair list topics, they're a little bit tricky and you do have to be a little bit extreme, I found, um, to get the multiple reasons out. Mm -hmm. so what it, fourth or fifth, you wouldn't do a letter, so I won't draft a letter. Right? No, you would draft an essay. Like yes, yes.
What are you thinking? <laughs> Okay. And now I don't think that's fair because it's around the beach and people are barefoot. And so it's a safety issue. Yeah. Yeah. But would that be consistent with some, because my money go to the race? Yeah. Going to something that's it's, not safe. I think it's truly that right. something that you truly believe is not fair. Absolutely. Even if you just want to do the quick top-down web or something with your idea and your reasons. I think it's hardest to get three reasons for some of your topics. That's why I can't yeah. do it. Yeah. What did you choose? Oh boy. <laughs> so I really need your help. The smart board projector <laughs> randomly shuts off when I'm trying to teach. <laughs> I really believe that uh, my projector should work at all times of the day so that I can do my job more effectively. That's awesome. So my reasons are it makes a loud noise when it shuts down. It distracts my students and it's hard to uh -huh. get their attention with blinking red lights. Uh -huh. And then children have to sit around my computer to see what I'm trying to teach. Very good reasons. <laughs> Yeah. Lexi, what did you choose? Um, school starting later than 8.05. Okay. Which wasn't as easy as I know. Is it that third reason? So I changed it. To what? I don't like that yet. Uh, yeah. Parking at hospitals in general, very expensive. And well, I mean, and you think about what? Peabody, you don't. Right. And they built this garage, so you have to pay there. Mm. And then even the little vision one that I go to, they mm -hmm. put up this little right in the middle of the like, non existent parking lot. I'm like, it's not right that you're charging me. Yes. Especially in Burlington. Especially, yeah. It, yes, yes. And if you're there, a lot of the times there's some type of crisis going that's, on, that's you know. The that I yeah, have. absolutely. I have yes. There's no lack of space, David. There's no lack of space. <coughs> what did you do, Alicia? <laughs> what was it? Pizza's the best lunch. Oh, yeah. So I don't know if you 
like it's not as lady clinic. Mm -hmm. So there's a Peabody and and there's little other branches, yeah. but there's a Peabody and there's Burlington. Mm -hmm. Well, Peabody is like for free, yeah. yeah. But in Burlington, yeah. it yeah. used to be free, but then they built a parking garage. Yes. And now you have to pay, but not only there, there's like a small vision that's connected to it. And it's a little <coughs> parking lot, but they put a little tiny pop-up booth. And it's like, it's emotion. Like, if I'm coming for a crisis, I don't want to be worried about having to pay. Right. right. It can be expensive if you're there for a long time. And it's not like there was a lack of space to be in this. Now you're going to charge me. Mm -hmm. Where I'm going to have to then go through a co payment. It's like a yeah. So, that is an ideal time. topic for your persuasive essay yeah. because yeah. has the emotion piece yeah. in it, you have the reasons, you have everything there. Um, all right, so you laid out a basic structure, which the kids would do too, and they'd actually draft. From there, they'd move into the revising and editing um, phase. And one of the things they're doing at um, three, four, and five is actually comparing their work against the characteristics. So this would be an anchor chart that they developed. Um, they, and they'd be checking, did I state my opinion? Did I give reasons? Um, can I add more details? Can I add quotes? Did I use a catchy lead, such as a quote or opinion? Um, did I end strong with a catchphrase or repetition? And can I use any comparisons to thinking about this is better than that because um, to make your opinion even stronger? So think about strategically if there's anywhere in your draft that you could add things in. So for example, I know in this a couple different things that I could do with my kids over the course of the unit is I'd add in a catchy lead. I did add in a strong ending. Um, I had actually thought of a place like with uh, K12 that I'd add in a small moment story. So think about anything that you could add in to yours, um, or quotes or something like that. I might even, I'd probably put quotes in my um, small moment story.